Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. Today for My Choice Tuesday, I decided that I really can't wait any longer to dive into the German supergroup Metal Opera Project created by Tobias Samet. This will be my first time hearing Avantasia, or maybe it's Avantasia. I don't know. I would love to know from you in the comments down below or in live chat if it's Avantasia or Avantasia, or if it's just acceptable to pronounce in different ways in different countries. I did do a little bit of research on this group, and I was blown away to see how many brilliant vocalists have collaborated with them. People like Michael Kiske and Roy Kahn and Jeff Tate, and that's just the beginning of the list. So I think this is going to be pretty awesome. Today, we're going to be listening to The Scarecrow, or The Flying Opera, it's sometimes called. I understand that this was designed essentially as like a concept album, which is cool. That's kind of like what opera is already. And in this concept album, there is a very lonely creature that's very isolated and experiencing unrequited love. And then this creature uh, sets off on some sort of journey. I think that the creature is played by Tobias Samet here. I'm not entirely sure on that, though I do have some lyrics to follow along with. So, without further ado, let's get to it. For those of you that don't know, uh, he is performing this live at Wacken, I believe. I think this is from 2008. And just want to shout out to the cool, it sounds like an electronic violin that's in the background. Uh, it sounds very cool. And I believe that is where you already get that sense of like a little bit of opera, but metal because it's electronic. That audience is just amazing. I'm just a loser in the game of love. I'm just a stray boy in the shade. What how I wish to know what love is like to find someone. Okay, I think that that might be an okay stopping spot. I'm trying to get better at where I stop these, just so you know. I was thinking to myself, what about this makes it operatic? You know, what? I don't think if you handed this to a person who had only listened to opera, they would say, oh, that sounds like an opera. Like, wh what about that makes it close? I think it might have to do with the heavier vibrato he's using. It's definitely um, a vibrato with more fluctuation and amplitude. So. Uh, vibrato is usually centered around uh, a main pitch and then how much above and below you go that'd be like an amplitude fluctuation sometimes that's just a very very tiny bit often like a Disney princess would have just like a little bit and opera singers tend to have a much wider fluctuation on that and also it's a wider vibrato meaning that it has uh, more time between. So the frequency of it is greater spaced apart. And both of these things are closer to opera singer vibrato. And I uh, I personally think that both have their places. 
I don't think that one should always sing with lots of vibrato or one should always sing just straight tone. I like having vibrato as an expressive element. And I like the way he brings it in at the very end of his phrases. Also want to shout out to that big octave jump that he did. So he started kind of low, a little more gravelly in that voice for sure. And when he jumped up, I thought he really knit everything together nicely. So it sounded like it was a supported sound. It sounded like it tracked correctly as he went up higher and he didn't just blast all the air out, right? It was, it was very nicely coordinated. I'm gonna go back just a little bit to try and listen to both of those things again. really nice control of that vibrato and often if a person does have a bigger vibrato it's harder to control so uh, impressed with that at the moment also I like his enunciation it's overdone uh, for many people's ears uh, and uh, a lot of pop music or current contemporary music people are just getting really close to the microphones so that they all of their consonants are easily picked up but in opera, you tend to really over enunciate those consonants because you got to get them out over an orchestra to a huge auditorium. So when we hear recordings of opera, we often pick up on that over enunciation of consonants as well. And he's definitely really giving tons of energy uh, and uh, giving a lot of weight into the consonants and lengthening them too at many times. So that's another aspect that makes it a little more operatic. Let's keep going. this layering of the vocals in the background. It feels very, um, <laughs> it feels like a little more gospel choir in some ways to me, but it does reminisce of some big chorus moments too. This is, this is fun. I like uh, the thickness of the harmonies too. Loved that instrumental interlude there as well. It feels like some of the ornamentation, so some of the, like the quicker or um, ornamental, if you will, extras there, they felt almost Beethoven in flavor. I was so confused. I thought that, that was the same singer for a little moment and it's not, this is um, Jorn Landa, I believe. I don't know him. Um, I was thinking for a bit that Tobias Samet had suddenly gotten a, a more, uh, like a deeper quality in his voice and now it's just a different singer. So I'm gonna go back and catch that with that in mind now. Oops. Yeah. Okay. 
I I loved the way he started this. It had warmth in the tone. It was definitely clean. And as he's gone on, he's added more and more distortion, essentially, in the sound. You get some more of that noise. That's a very, very interesting to me to hear that progression. It definitely felt like it was a gradual one and from like quite clean to really quite a lot of noise in the sound here, that, that, uh, the grit in there that's happening. And I feel that he controlled that the whole way. It was just like this very clean, uh, balance that he was just adding and taking away percentages. Very, very, very nice. I want to listen to that again. <laughs> here. So you're an angel meant to walk down here And you believe it's all divine uh, Very interesting. There are times when it sounds like the space back here, like that pharyngeal space, so kind of back behind the tongue and the throat, there's more space there. He'll like, so you're an angel. It sounds like it's back there. And then he'll move it forward to almost close the space up and come more forward, like divine and come uh, much more pointed on that. So it sounds like he's playing with that space a whole bunch already. So you're an angel meant to walk down here And you believe it's all divine And you don't play by all those temporal rules You watch the world Much, much respect for that. Uh, love that uh, gradation as he was going up. And I just really like the melodies in this. They do feel more classical. They're evolving to somewhere. It's not the same thing repeated over and over uh, with just like slight modifications. It has a little more trajectory planned out, which feels to me more operatic in nature as well. But at the same time, uh, there's just like something that's catchy about it, like makes me want to sing along, which that's a great sign. Okay, let's keep going. Those are beautiful harmonies. They're beautiful. Beautiful transition. I love the way that they've mostly frozen on stage to help continue with that visual as well. And it's it can be so difficult in any stage production to really nicely coordinate transitions. Uh, you don't want people's attention to dissipate in that moment. And if somebody's just finished an, an amazing moment of like glorious harmony, like how do you how do you keep them? How do you take them to the next moment? And it's just difficult. And here, I think having them freeze on stage, uh, it really creates more anticipation for what's about to happen next. And that's sort of what you want to do with transitions, like have something that continues with that energy. Maybe it's a person that steps out and gives a little aside to the audience as the stage is uh, being shifted in some way. And I think that it's beautiful that you have this music that's continuing. There's a, there was like a really cool, I think, um, 
it sounded like a really cool arpeggi- arpeggiation of a diminished chord at one point that was on the piano. I thought that was beautiful. It's got like elements of classical and jazz mixed in there. So there's a lot of interesting things happening instrumentally. It's different. So that grabs our attention as well. But this pausing on the stage, I just thought was such a cool way to continue to build that anticipation. <laughs> wow, that's high. This is one thing that I think metal and classical music also have in common that I love and adore. And it's moments when you spotlight your instrumentalists. It's just both uh, both kinds of music have tons of virtuosic playing, playing that takes tons of not just talent, but tons of dedication and developing talent until you get to a point where you're able to fluidly play like this. And I, I don't play guitar. Um, but it sounds to me in many ways like it's a string instrument in an orchestra that has a beautiful solo moment and we get to experience emotion, not just through the lyrics that is that are in the song, but rather as sort of a soaring musical line that's coming from an instrument. I adore that about both both kinds. It definitely feels like a journey. vibrato frequency change in there. So the speed of it shifted as he went on. It's really hard to shift the speed of vibrato like mid note. That was crazy. He's got treasure in his eyes. That is gonna turn to wow. Like it almost turned into a trill at the end. And it looked like he was using his tongue to actually control that a little bit. 
That was fascinating. He's got treasure in his eyes. That is gonna turn to I'm a shaker. I'm a shaker. I'm a danger. Maybe. His endurance is crazy. It's crazy. I love the sound that he also, he also almost always sounds like he has a little bit of a smile inside, which is just, um, that it's also very reminiscent of opera. A lot of times when there's a little smile, it's partly because there's a little more height kind of back by the soft palate. Um, but it doesn't sound like it's getting caught up in like super domey. Instead, he's actually just angling after that height, like angling straight out. This is so impressive. The way he just plows through these notes here, they're high. I would think they'd be very exhausting, but it doesn't seem like it's really tiring him out. He looks like he's very engaged in his body, but I don't hear any signs currently of vocal fatigue. Let's go back. Love that interaction. Good hit. This is so interesting. Oh, oops. Looking back here, he's really using his tongue to control some of the vibrato, or maybe it's possible that his tongue is reacting to the vibrato rather than being controlled by it. The vibrato is essentially just antagonistic muscles in and around your larynx um, that are uh, sort of struggling and end up relaxing periodically and then re-engaging. It creates this uh, periodic vibration. And sometimes that leads to a thing called vertical bobbing. I kid you not, that is a technical term, vertical bobbing, which is when you see the larynx going booga, 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 right? So you have wacka, wacka, wacka in the vocal folds and booga, booga, booga in the larynx. There you go. Um, and when this is happening, it can cause other things around the structure to also bob. So sometimes you'll see a little bit of jaw that can come in and shake a little bit. As long as that jaw isn't originating the vibrato, it's not what we'd call necessarily gospel jaw, which is um, sort of a technique of adding more tension in order to create vibrato, which is frowned upon often. Um, so in this case, I wonder if the uh, tongue is helping to control the vibrato in some way, or if we're seeing that different tongue reaction as a part of a vibrato and the vertical bobbing. <laughs> There it is! Oh! <laughs> <In the time. laughs> it, it also just sounds like he's really purposely almost going towards a half step trill where he's alternating between two notes. That's a really good note. That's a really good note. Um, I love that he has so much grit in the sound and then we went up to that top note, making it clean all of a sudden. It just carries that note. It almost sounds like a whistle tone in some ways. I don't think it is. I think that he's still keeping this uh, in a full voice at this point. Uh, but he might be really mixing some things in there to get that really pure laser like tone it it just it's not it's like a laser but it floats at the same time there's so much about it that's great Whoa. that's sorry we're listening to it one more time one more time this is really really I love the 
way he's adding like teeth and that sound like a little more rawr viciousness. this is opera because it requires crazy endurance. That, uh, that is actually probably the biggest indication of this is opera to me so far, because these guys have been singing in a high tessitura for most of the time, just really belting it out there, but it sounds like they've got low support. They're really grounded in the stage and they're just continuing, continuing going. And uh, instead of having like a lull here where it's like, okay, have some vocal recovery time. They're like, no, 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 no. Plow ahead. This definitely feels Mozart. <laughs> Mozart's totally metal too. Okay. Woo. Back. <laughs> Okay, I just want to say I like this line. One day she'll wonder why she had to let you disappear. I, I love that they have some really good lines in these lyrics, right? And it feels like it, that is an appropriate lyric for somebody who's experiencing unrequited love. Uh, yeah, sometimes, sometimes that timing just isn't right, peeps. So anyhow, uh, I like, I like that line a lot. Wanted to point it out and uh, also really dig this chorus. It feels almost journey in some ways. Rise to fame, your time has come. Time will come to take the sun. All right, this is inspiring. I like it. luscious in the sound with all of these people singing. I love the fullness of it. I love that there's also such a wide range of instruments that are behind it. Like this is just a wall of sound and it's glorious. It's super, super glorious. Um, I wish that there was more, uh, more music like this today that was really combining some of the brilliant things in different kinds of genres and creating something that was epic in proportion. We still had a little bit of time left. Let's go back for that ending moment. I was really, I liked his final scream there. Hey <laughs> awesome. That was totally epic. I think the most impressive thing overall for the vocalist to me was the endurance. It was really impressive. Also, man, uh, that high note that Tobias hit, that was crazy good. 
I'm still wondering exactly went on in here as he shifted to that because that was that was very very impressive, and I was also very much of course you saw this. I'm intrigued by how he was uh, manipulating that vibrato. He, he's got a lot of different skills, and it sounds like he's got a lot of different kinds of ways to control the sound that is coming out. Uh, sometimes you want something that is super controlled. Sometimes you want things that fly and are a little more free. It sounds like he has a balance where he can control it, and sometimes he can just let it go, which is a great, great thing to have. I, I liked this duet between Tobias and Yorn as well. That felt like a very good combo of voices. They had similar amounts of grit at various times, which was really cool to hear, and also both had the ability to go clean or not. Very, very interesting projection of this journey. I'm curious to know like where it goes, because I understand that they've done a lot more music since then too. So it sounds like it's really become a, a big story beyond just the song, and that's pretty dang awesome. Thank you to all of you who told me about this in chats and on YouTube. I really, really enjoyed this, and I loved getting to understand a little more about how metal and opera might be combined. That was just delightful and fun to get to dig into. So thank you so much. I really appreciate your recommendations. If you want to keep making recommendations, the best place to do that is going to be in the comments of this video on YouTube, or really any video, but commenting on videos on YouTube is where we see your recommendations the most. Additionally, if you want to make sure you don't miss it when I do your recommendation, make sure to hit subscribe and turn on that bell for notifications. You can find me here every Monday, Tuesday, and Friday at 8 a.m. Arizona time for premieres. You can also find me on Patreon and at thecharismaticvoice.com. I'll see you somewhere soon.